our team came in elementary school, they beat the Aggies. <laughs> that was two years ago, indeed. Kennedy Carter didn't play in that game. But, uh, yeah, you're right. That was two years ago. We've had the tip off. Brian Garland's referee, he threw the ball up, and it went Texas A&M's way. Jordan Nixon has the ball, gets it over right side to Leah Wilson. Wilson goes into the paint from the right side, back out to Nixon. Nixon goes inside, dumps it underneath to Jones. Jones puts it up, no good. Johnson with the rebound, puts it up, it won't go. The rebound goes out of bounds. Out of bounds on Lamar, belongs to A&M. Aggies certainly have a big height advantage, as you talked about. Their tallest player that Lamar starting, I believe, is 5'11", and we got Sierra Johnson at 6'4", and then, of course, Dia Jones. But the Aggies have got to make some of those easy shots. Nixon into Johnson, Johnson to Wells. Wells does a little stutter step on the right side of the paint, puts it up, back rim no good. Sierra with the rebound. She gives a little head fake and puts it up off the glass up and in. Again, the Aggies are now one for four shooting, but dominating the offensive boards. Sierra Johnson with the first bucket of the season for Texas A&M. Here comes Lamar. This is Pimentel, the senior guard from St. Louis. She's the quarterback. She brings it down over the timeline, dribbles the ball out top of the key, goes over right side to Malone. Malone, the freshman, over on the right wing. Now goes baseline to Gibbs. Gibbs tried to get it over to Galloway, but it's stolen there by Leah Wilson. Wilson comes down, tries to get it out to Wells, but threw the pass wide and out of bounds. You like to see the Aggies try to get out and transition. And well, the best thing I see out there is Aaliyah Wilson's playing without that brace that she had. Yeah. Kept coming off of ACL surgery from two years ago where she was really just playing about 80% last year. No brace this year, so expect a lot better things, a lot more, more power from Aaliyah. Pimentel brings the ball down over at the top of the key. Now go over right side to Gibbs. Gibbs. Hands the ball, gets a weave going here to Pimentel. Pimentel at the free throw line, goes past Nixon, puts up the jumper, and it goes. Nice shot there by Jaden Pimentel. Pimentel took the ball right at Jaden uh, Nixon, right? Jordan Nixon, excuse me, and really did a nice job of getting within the lane and rose up and made the nice jump shot. Pimentel scored eight and a half points a game last year. She's one of two starters returning. Here's Aaliyah Wilson from the free throw line. Puts it up too hard off the back rim. No good. Rebound comes down to Michaela Malone. Malone gets the ball outside. Here's a three ball by Hastings. It rattles and goes. Nice shot from the right wing from Hastings. And Lamar leads it five to two. We go back the other way. Aggies lose the basketball. It'll belong to Lamar. You know, we did the opening with the Gary Blair show, and Aquanisha Franklin actually called into it the other day and was a guest. <laughs> and she said they want to get up and down the floor. They look for them to press out of made shots, and you're seeing some of that from the Cardinals. Here's Pimentel after the turnover by the Aggies. They lead it by three, Lamar does, and they've got the basketball. This is Galloway. Galloway gets it to Pimentel. Pimentel goes at the free throw line, guarded there by Wells. Go out into the corner to Malone. Three ball, boom, nothing but net from the corner. A couple of threes here by the Cardinals, and they have an 8-2 lead. And here they go ahead and pick up a little three-quarter trap just to slow the Aggies down. They get past that trap. This is Wells from the free throw line. Puts it up short. No good. Aggies having trouble finding the basket from just about anywhere on the court. They've got one put back by Johnson, and that's it. Come down the other way. Lamar and Pimentel dribbles it on the line. It'll belong to A&M. Yeah, the Aggies are shooting one for six right now. Lamar's three of three. If we had any injuries to report, that'd be brought to you by St. Joseph. St. Joseph, the official health care provider of A&M Athletics. Here's a steal by Lamar. Pimentel goes down, and she shoots but gets fouled. She'll go to the line to shoot it. That foul on Aaliyah Wilson. That's a couple of times now. The Aggies have just been very careless with the basketball. They did it on a, a sideline pass trying to break the press, and, and then right there just trying to reverse the basketball in the press breaker, and, and it's just they can't, you know, be that lackadaisical with the basketball. Today's UPS My Choice Alert brought to you by UPS, working together to achieve great things like Texas A&M basketball. That's problem solving. Visit UPS.com to learn more. Official logistics company of Texas A&M Athletics misses the first free throw. Pimentel does. You know Gary Blair's going to make sure he, he tries to get that ball inside right here, get it to probably India Jones, who I don't think's had a, a real good touch yet. Second free throw is good. It's a 9-2 lead for Lamar. Here's Nixon. She gets it down in the corner to Wells. Wells drives the baseline, puts it up. It won't go, but she does get fouled as Galloway fouls her, bumps her, going to the basket. And Wells will go to the free throw line. The Aggies did a great job off of that made free throw as they went ahead and they attacked that, that press right there on their press breaker, made two passes, and Kayla Wells was already in position to get herself to the free throw line. Wells averaged 22 points a game last year in her junior season. She's a career scorer of 29 points a game. 
Kayla Wells. 13 points a game in conference play last year. First free throw, and she got it. It went around the rim and came in. 9-3 is the score. Tom, what did you, did you say 22 points a game? That's what I said. Is that wrong? God, yeah, Kennedy okay. School. I mean, I'm just that's saying. right. I got the wrong number. Yeah, well, that's okay. I'm, yeah, I'm just trying to these, build these kids up. No, you know? I know. I just second, don't know. You know, I'm, I'm not trusting these stats no, they gave us. No, second free, <laughs> second free throw is good, and it's now nine to four. So the Aggies after the make going to go ahead and show a little full court press because a lot of times teams that press don't like to be pressed themselves. You're right. Wells is 13 points a game. I was reading Kennedy's line there. I, the print is real small yeah. on this thing they gave us. We come down the other way. Lamar goes to the basket. It's the drive by. Uh, Hastings is no good. Too hard. And the rebound comes down to A&M. Aaliyah Wilson has it on the left side. Get it to Nixon. Top of the key. She tries a long two. It's just inside the arc. And Nixon gets her first points as an Aggie. Jordan Nixon. It's set nine to six. A lot of, lot of patience right there by Aaliyah Wilson. She let the double team come and got the nice easy pass to Jordan Nixon who was able to knock down the jump shot. They do a weave on the outside, get the ball to Malone. Malone jumper, 16-footer, is no good. Off the back iron, rebound comes down to Aaliyah Wilson. Wilson with the basketball. This one's coming to us. It's going to be a foul on Pimentel. Oh, I forgot. We're probably not allowed to touch the basketball if it no, comes they, to us. We no, no they'd have to put it in a steamer if yeah. you touched it, I Especially think. Especially if yes. I touched it, I'm sure. You know. <laughs> That's right. Don't know where those hands have been. We're not joking about uh, about the uh, the pandemic, of course, folks. But you got to laugh about things. Yeah. I mean, you know, again, we, we we are. You can't if you don't laugh about it, you're gonna cry about it, right? <laughs> you're absolutely right. Nine to six, Lamar leads it. They've had the uh, lead since the two to nothing Aggie lead was answered by a three pointer, and they've had the lead ever since. But the Aggies have the ball, three down. This is Dia Jones. Jones almost gets the ball tipped away, but she chases it back down. Now she goes around the corner, and she's going to get bumped on the outside by a uh, substitution for Lamar. That was uh, Michaela Wilson who came into the ball game for Lamar, a junior forward out of Rayville, Louisiana. Remember, Lamar is very aggressive and playing extremely aggressive on their defensive end right now. Leah Wilson's three is short. We've got a whistle and a foul on the rebound. I think that's on Kayla Wells. No, I is that right? No. No, Kayla was going. I think okay, it was on Malone. Shoot, yeah. Excuse me. It was on Malone. So the Aggies will have the ball inbound underneath their own basket. Jordan Nixon will inbound the ball, looking for somebody to throw it to. Going to go out deep to Leah Wilson. Now Wilson to Nixon. Nixon go underneath to Johnson, and Johnson's turnaround jumper is up and in. Sierra Johnson has four points in the game. It's a 9-8 Lamar lead. Nice ball movement because Sierra Johnson had gotten herself very deep, and I like the fact she just caught it, went straight up, didn't make any, any moves. Kayla Mitchell is in for Lamar now. She came in off the bench. Get the ball to Malone. Now Malone to uh, Wilson for Lamar. Lamar, here's a deep three. It's in and out. No good by Hastings and the long rebound comes out to Aaliyah Wilson. We've got a whistle and a foul. Foul on uh, Amaya Collins. The Aggies so, are in the bonus already. So Coach uh, Franklin substituting quite liberally here is uh, coming into the game. Got another one. Got Gibbs coming back into the game. She was one of the starters. And Gibbs will uh, come in for uh, Wilson. And going to the line, already in the bonus, like Tab told you, Aaliyah Wilson. Wilson looked like she might have got a finger in the eye during that foul, but she's okay. First free throw is on its way, and it's short. And I was getting back to the point about Lamar's defense. It reminds me a lot of the aggressiveness that, that Aquanisha and her gang played under the tutelage of that coach that works about, you know, two hours from here now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are we yeah, allowed he's to gotten, say his name? We're not got, allowed to say his name. He's anymore, gotten a little right? bit closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vic Schaefer, of course, and the Aggies will be in Austin December the 6th to take on Coach Schaefer and the Longhorns. The second free throw was good. We're tied at nine, but not anymore because there's a three ball from the left side by Gibbs. The junior from Apple Valley, California, just nailed one from the corner. And here's uh, Wells will try to answer with her three ball from the right wing, but it's no good. The rebound by Sierra Johnson, turnaround jumper will miss. Rebound chased down by Collins of Lamar. Lamar has the basketball. This is Hastings. Hastings, one arm pass to Malone. Malone goes in, but chased back outside by Jones. Here's the jumper from the corner is no good. The rebound by Wilson. Gary Blair wanting to slow it down. I don't think he wants to get in a true up and down game with the Lamar Cardinals. 
There's Wilson being guarded by uh, Sabria Dean. I think that's who is in the game now. Here's the uh, long three by uh, Jordan Nixon, and it's no good. Rebound comes down to Mitchell. Excuse me, Dean is not in the game. That was Hastings that I was looking at her two and thinking it was a three. Here's uh, Malone. Malone goes into the arc, does a 360, loses the basketball. Jordan Nixon has it. It's going to come down two on one. She'll go all the way down, puts up the little floater layup and puts it up and in, and Jordan Nixon has four points. The Aggies now trail 14 to, it should be 11 for the Ag, or it should be, I don't think the score on the scoreboard is right. Nope, it's not. 12 to 11, the Aggies lead. Uh, Lamar leads it. Scoreboard showing 14 to 9. I think they just gave the, uh, the score to the wrong team. But it is uh, 12 to 11, Lamar on top. Here's Lamar coming down and getting it underneath and putting it up and in is Collins. And now it is 14 to 11 in favor of the Cardinals. Bob Starkey not happy with his defense right there, allowing penetration. That pass was way too simple. Gary Blair has three substitutes at, at the scorer's table. He knows this pace is pretty up and down. Here's a hook pass out to Wilson. Wilson to the right of the uh, paint, loses the ball, but then gets it back. Tries to hook pass it to India Jones down low, but the ball gets away, goes down to Lamar. This is Malone. Malone goes all the way, puts up the layup, hangs on the rim, won't go. Whistle and a foul, though. They're going to get Sierra. And the clock's still running. Sierra Johnson with the foul. We got 3.22 left to play in the first quarter, and we have got a timeout. It's 14 to 11 in favor of Lamar. We'll be back. This is Aggie basketball from Learfield IMG College. Well, Tab, just uh, right when that timeout was called, Coach Gary Blair and Kayla Wells posed for a quick picture with the basketball. Reason for that is with those two points, Kayla Wells became the 32nd member of A&M's 1,000-point club with those two points. But the Aggies trail it 14 to 11. Yeah, but they, they had to go back and put six seconds back on the clock. I don't know if they're using those electronic whistles or, or whatever it is, but the whistle wasn't loud. I mean, you, you saw the play down here, and you could barely hear right. the whistle. So, and I looked up and I saw the clock continue to run and they did put six seconds back on, but typically the officials, you know, whistles are synchronized with those little packs on, on them to get them to, to cut off. So again, we're gonna have a lot of firsts today and a lot of trial and error. So I'm sure that's one of them. Aggie fans, no matter where you cheer on Texas A&M this basketball season, make sure to grab an ice cold Dos Equis for tip off and yell gig'em. Enjoy Dos Equis responsibly, imported by Cervezas Mexicanas. White Plains, New York. I know you talked about this game and some of the keys. Why don't you talk a little bit more about that, brought to you by CC Creations. You know, again, I think the Aggies need to go ahead and just use their dominance in their size. You know, they're getting the ball inside, but they're still only shooting 
four of 13 from the floor, but they also have to protect the basketball as there's four turnovers in this first uh, seven minutes of action. So again, the Aggies just kind of came out a little lackadaisical, I think, to start this ball game. You know, and they need to control the press. If Lamar, to, to win the basketball game, needs to make this a 94-foot game, and, and they just need to keep the pressure up on the Aggies, either whether it's going to be full court or the half court, and, and I'm sure that's what Aquanisha wants that to do, and I apologize. I can't call her Coach Franklin still. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the CC Creations keys to the game. CC Creations, the preferred merchandise vendor of Texas A&M Athletics. Aggies will will be on the road quickly this Saturday as they'll be up in Chicago to take on DePaul. That'll be at 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. We come back, Lamar is at the free throw line, and the first free throw is good by Michaela Malone, the freshman out of Fort Worth. And we'll get the pleasure of doing that game, right, Tom? We will. 15 to 11 is now the score, 16 to 11, as Malone makes both free throws, and she's going to go out of the game. Coming in for her is Sabria Dean, who I called earlier, but she wasn't on the court yet. Now she's on the court. She's a freshman from Mineola, Texas. Good old Mineola. Lamar in a 1 2 1 1 trap, but again, that time wasn't an all out trap. Bad pass right there across the top of the zone. Turnover, Texas AM, and Dean got the ball, and she brings it down, gets it over to Hastings. Hastings brings it back out to Pimentel. She's the point guard, the quarterback. She picks up the uh, guard. Destiny Pitts, by the way, in the game for Texas A&M, and she just got her first rebound as an Aggie, the transfer from Minnesota, as we're seeing Destiny Pitts, her first action here for the Aggies. She wears that uh, familiar number three. Here's uh, Wells. Wells over on the left side trying for her 1,000 second point, but instead she passes it back out to uh, Mackenzie Green, who is also in the ball game. Want to try to get these substitutions for you. Got to get used to that. We also, for Texas A&M, have uh, Malia Johnson in the ball game. So we have uh, Mackenzie Green, who did play sparingly last year, with a couple of new faces in Pitts and Johnson. And the other Johnson is uh, – Sierra Johnson, she is at the line. She just got fouled. What Gary Blair say? Two greens, three, three Johnsons, green. we got seven three Jones. Greens. Yeah, two Jones. <laughs> three <laughs> greens, two Johnsons, and two Jones on this team. Last year we did not have any duplicate names, but we sure made up for it this year. I'm With glad he likes us to call him by that first name. <laughs> <laughs> three greens, two Johnsons, and and two Jones. And uh, Sierra Johnson just made the first free throw. What I like on that last possession though is Sierra Johnson was asking and almost demanding the basketball do down low as she made that second one. But you know, again, I thought there's been times where she's just gotten good position. But I think as senior year, she's going to make sure everybody knows she's on the floor. Lamar leads it 16 to 13 after those two free throws by Sierra Johnson. Here's the Cardinals with the basketball. This is Pimentel. Pimentel over on the right wing gets it out to Gibbs. Gibbs over on the left wing now goes left side to Sabria Dean. Dean dribbles the ball to the free throw line, out to Pimentel. Now Pimentel gets it inside. Turnaround jumper by Collins is no good. Rebound, Collins fights for it, but she steps on the line. It'll belong to Texas A&M. Again, right there, Sierra Johnson, nice defense, forced the uh, the fadeaway jump shot, but instead of just going to block out the bot, the person, she went and turned the ball. Aggies lucky they got the basketball back. 2-10 left to play here in the first quarter. Here's uh, Pitts. Pitts lobs the ball into Sierra. Sierra goes up to the glass, puts it off the glass, and puts it up and in. And Sierra Johnson has six points in the game. Pitts gets the her first assist of her Aggie career. So she's got a rebound and assist. There you go. Now we just need a point. Building up the numbers, 16 to 15, a one-point Lamar lead. Driving to the basket is Pimentel, but Pimentel is fouled by Mackenzie Green on the way to the basket, and she will go to the line. Yep, on Saturday we will be uh, calling the game at DePaul uh, as the Aggies will be in Chicago to take on the Blue Demons. Wells Fargo brings you that warm-up feature. Wells Fargo, the official bank of Texas A&M Athletics. Warming up for DePaul. Here at the line is a Pimentel. Pimentel had 17 starts last year for the Cardinals. 89 assists and 93 steals. And she just made the first free throw. Lamar went 10 and 19 in Aquanisha's first year as the head coach. Aquanisha Franklin spent one year at Kansas and then went to Starkville with Coach Vic Schaefer where she spent three seasons and then the last four seasons back at Kansas before coming to Lamar last season. 
Here's the Aggies with the ball. This is Pitts. Pitts to Wells down in the corner, drives the baseline, puts it up, and a charge call, though, on Kayla Wells, the offensive foul. Again, the Aggies are attacking this uh, this press straight out of a made free throw, and Kayla Wells got it, took it baseline, and the, the player from the weak side came over and took the charge. I was hoping we could get a replay because she looked pretty deep. I thought she might have been in the restricted area, but apparently she wasn't. Lamar leads it 18 to 15. Lamar has the basketball. This is Pimentel. She stops, pops on the left side. It's no good. The rebound fought for. Sierra Johnson outfights Galloway for it. Aggies have the ball. This is Wells. Wells comes over the timeline. She kind of weaves through a couple of defenders. Now goes to the free th goes to the baseline and a little fall away jumper for Kayla Wells and she puts it up and in. Kayla Wells showing a little ability to take the ball off the dribble right there. She was the only guard left. Sierra Johnson got it to her. She took it all the way down and pulled up that first, weaved in and out of a few people and got the shot up. 18 to 17, a one-point lead now for Lamar. Hastings has the basketball out top of the key. She lost the ball on the dribble, can't dribble it again, or that would be a double, so instead she gets it off to Gibbs. Now Gibbs goes back to Dean at the top of the key. She drives the paint, dishes it off last minute to... Galloway, and Galloway puts it up and in, going to the basket from the right side. And we have the first Bob Starkey arising right there. Still not happy with that how they're handling that pick and roll up top. Malia Johnson got the ball, gets it outside, and now we go inside to uh, Wells, and, it, and a whistle and a foul on Kayla Wells, and that is her second. Gary Blair not happy with that call at no. all. I was looking down, Tap. Was that on a, on a rebound try that got no, her on no, a foul? No, no. Well, they, they just like, reversed the basketball, and she tried to uh, oh. come in from the weak side, and Lamar's doing it. Okay. Like, as I said, reminiscent of some old Aggie teams. Yeah. They're going to come from that weak side and dare you to charge run into them. Kayla Mitchell brings the ball down for Lamar. This is Hastings. They weave it over to the right side to Dean and a turnover, and it'll belong to Texas A&M. Just a couple extra steps by Angel Hastings. She thought she was going to be able to give that ball up. Shot clock's off, 26. Gary Blair's probably going to go down for one. Got another new player in the ball game. 26 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Lamar leads it by three now, 20 to 17. And we've got another new face into the game. This is Ella, Ella Tofiano. Tofiano is a junior from Sydney, Australia, and a transfer from Midland College as she is in the ball game. Here's Pitts. Pitts, three ball right side, off the back rim, no good. Leah Wilson with the rebound. Good offensive rebound this time. Ten on the game clock. Tofiano is six foot three, but plays a lot bigger than that at the post. She comes out to set the screen for Pitts. Now get it out to Wilson. Two seconds on the clock. Here's a shot by Wilson. It's no good. Chased down by Lamar, but the horn, and that's the end of the first quarter. Lamar leads it 20 to 17, except for a two to nothing Aggie lead. They have led it all the way, as a matter of fact. Hey, Texas Farm Bureau Insurance wants to give you a VIP Aggie basketball fan experience this year. Go to 12thman.com slash maroon contest and register. One winner and a guest will receive game tickets, hotel accommodations, autograph memorabilia, and more. Register today at 12thman.com slash maroon contest. Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, proud partner of A&M Athletics. Saggy basketball from Learfield IMG College. Her fans is actually sort of in the first section up into the stands, if you kind of know what I mean. Press row goes now like the like it used to be, 94 <laughs> feet yeah. from end to end is press row. That's where the stat crew is. That's where we are. That's where uh, TV will be when TV comes here. Uh, so it's a whole different look if you're looking down on the court. Yeah, you know, again, we didn't know what to expect getting here, but they certainly have given us a lot of, a lot of a lot spacing, of you know, no <laughs> doubt about it. You and I have probably begged for this type of room in the past. You know, it's been great. But, uh, you know, again, if you're Aquanisha Franklin just talking about that first quarter, you could, uh, you got to be happy with the way it went if you're the Lamar Cardinals. If you're Gary Blair, you're probably extremely frustrated. You started to see some of that frustration with him getting, fr you know, disappointed with some of the calls and things like that. But, you know, looking around during the TV and we talked about people coming back and things like that, and I'm sure we'll mention it at some point. Gary Blair's staff is pretty much intact, except there was one addition, Sidney Carter. He That's loves right. to bring back his old players. <laughs> indeed he does. And indeed he has. And uh, here we go. Starting the second quarter, Lamar gets the basketball, and they have a three-point lead. It's 20 to 17. This is Lamar. This is Hastings. Hastings gets the ball out to Gibbs. Gibbs dribbles the ball, being guarded there by Johnson. But they do get the ball down underneath to Galloway, and Galloway puts it up and in from the left side. 
Again, they, Lamar just handling the basketball, and whatever the Aggies are throwing at him defensively, they've had an answer so far. This is uh, Malia Johnson. Gets it out to Wilson on the right side. Goes into Pitts. Pitts backing in uh, against Hastings, and we've got a whistle of a three-second violation on Texas A&M. That was on Tofiano. Yeah, they're going to get Ella on that one. I'll just stick with Ella. That's much easier to say. But, uh, again, you know, it's just – you know, that's a lot of sub for Gary Blair. That's a lot of substitutions in the first quarter. Three that's of right. them, you know, almost four of them. And so, you know, again, I, I know he wants to go ahead and, and, and play his depth, but you look out on the floor, you got four of the five players right now are returners, the other one being Destiny Pitts. Here's uh, Lamar with the ball th basketball. Kayla Mitchell, the sophomore from Jonesboro, brings it down. Setting the screen is Galloway. She goes around that screen. Now get the ball out left side of Gibbs. Gibbs passed up the three, gets it outside to Sabria Dean. Dean picking up the guard there from uh, Jones, throws the ball away. It'll belong to Texas A&M. Dean and Hastings not on the right page. I think Dean made the right pass. If Hastings goes back door, I think she's got an opening. Mackenzie Green brings the ball down for the Aggies, the uh, sophomore from Manville, Texas. She goes over left side, bounce passes it to Wilson. Wilson, turnaround jumper, goes off the rim, won't go. Jones with the rebound up and in. India Jones. Just oh. get used to saying that, Tom. Yep. I think uh, the PA announcer just gave that to Destiny Pitts, but that's not right. That belonged to India Jones was underneath, made that shot. It's 2020 first game. Yeah, you got it. This is uh, Lamar with the basketball. This is Galloway. That's a five count. Galloway on the baseline. Being guarded closely there by Sierra Johnson. Gets the ball back out to Hastings, though. Hastings stops her dribble. Gets guarded and gets it out to Dean. Dean goes into the free throw line. Nice uh Defense there by Adia Jones makes her throw the ball away. The Aggies have the basketball. So Leo Wilson now out to Pitts. Pitts over on the right side, starts inside the arc, but she is guarded there by Gibbs. Now get to Pitts. Pitts, nice lob into Johnson. Johnson up off the glass, up and in. Sierra Johnson gets it, and it's a 22-21 lead. So the Aggies on a four-point run, and Aquadisha Lamar calls a timeout. Yeah, she didn't like the way those last two defensive possession turned the off possession look, so she's going to have a quick timeout. And we take the timeout, too, with 7.54 left to play here in the second quarter. College basketball is back on Sierra Sirius XM. <laughs> Uh, we've got 24-7 talk and analysis as well as live play-by-play -play on ESPNU Radio. Learn more at SiriusXN.com College Hoops. Was this a long time out? Yes, it yes, was. Yes, it was. Uh, okay. We'll be back. This is Aggie Basketball on Learfield IMG College. Are alive. Hey, Aggie fans, learn how you can take your business to the top with UPS. Visit ups.com forward slash pivot to learn more about tools built to help you be unstoppable. What am I trying to say here? Okay, looking for the uh, where I put stuff. Yeah, there we go. The there schedule coming up, looking for the next home game. 
for uh, Texas A&M. Like we told you on Saturday, they will be in Chicago at DePaul. We'll be on the air at uh, 345 for that one. They will be back here on December the 2nd, and that will be Texas Southern, and that will be elementary school day. December the 2nd, 11 a.m. is the tip-off. So we're still having elementary school day. Don't know how they're going to socially distance with that, but I'm sure that they're going to find a way, but that's always a fun game. Absolutely. I'll still bring my earplugs no matter how socially distanced <laughs> they are because that's a loud group that comes in. But they do have fun. It is 22-21. The Aggies still trying to take their first lead since 2 to nothing. Lamar hit a three right after that, and they've had the lead ever since. Have led by uh, as many as five, but now it's a one-point game, 22-21. And Lamar has the basketball coming out of that timeout. This is Jaden Pimentel. She brings the ball down, gets it over to, to, to Sabria Dean. Dean brings the ball to uh, Malone. Malone goes around at the arc, now cuts in at the paint on the right side. Gets it outside now to Pimentel. Pimentel dribbles past Jones. Stop, pop, nice little 14-footer from the left side of the paint as Pimentel puts it up and in, and they lead by three again. Bad communication by the Aggies. Nobody stayed with the dribble. Everybody went off and, and handled the picker, and too easy of a shot. Mackenzie Green with the ball. Pimentel on the guard from her. Hook passes it to Jones out at the top of the key. Go outside to pitch. Destiny pitch. Three ball off the back iron. No good. Long rebound comes out to Pimentel. The point guard brings it down. Now she stops at the top of the free throw line. Gets it over to uh, Gibbs. Gibbs back to Pimentel. Dribbling against McKenzie Green. Now shoulders into McGreen. Puts up a little baby hook. It's no good. The rebound by Sierra Johnson. Johnson to Wilson. Wilson. Kind of a lazy pass going down to Andia Jones. Didn't have enough on it and is stolen there by Dean. Eight turnovers for the Aggies. Again, just not taking care of the basketball. This is Dean. Dean goes over right side, takes her uh, screen. Now kicks it over in the corner to Gibbs. Gibbs three ball, misses everything, goes high and over the rim. But the rebound, chased down there by Galloway. Galloway gets it back out to Pimentel. No Pim reset, reset no. on the shot clock. Pimentel tries to split the defenders. The ball is loose but goes into the hands of Galloway. Galloway baseline hook shot, puts it up. It's no good. Whistle and a foul that time on Galloway. Her second personal foul. Collins comes in for Lamar. The junior from Mesquite. Aggies have the ball. They're down by three again. 24-21. 6-12 left to play here in the second quarter. It's Mackenzie Green. She dribbles the ball over the right side. Hook passes it to Jones. And Jones gets fouled by Anicia Gibbs. And what they do that was similar to when I talked about some of those old Aggie defenses, when you reverse the ball through the post, a lot of teams just sag back and let you make that easy reversal. Not this Cardinal team, and that's what Vic Schaefer used to always teach. They're going to deny that pass and make you work to reverse the basketball. Green gets the inbound, gets it to uh, Sierra, playing out high. Now gets it underneath Jones. Jones goes uh, right around her defender, Gibbs, and puts it up and in and got fouled. And then Dia Jones will go to the free throw line. That's only India's fourth point. And again, I'd said earlier on, I'd like to see her get the basketball a little bit more. And again, she's working hard as she always does down low. And, and again, I think Gary Blair is trying to get those perimeter players to make sure they look inside because she and Sarah are both working hard. Everybody with the Aggie seems to be uh, okay injury wise. If you do have injuries, your injury report will be brought to you by St. Joseph. St. Joseph, the official health care provider of Texas A&M Athletics. And going to the free throw line will be Andia Jones. Jones is, of course, a senior on the club. Averaged 16 points for her career, or in conference last year, 11 points, 11 points in conference last year. A returning starter from Lawrenceville, Georgia, and she just completed the three-point play, and we're tied at 24-all. Now the Aggies have a chance to take the lead as a turnover on Lamar as Hastings throws the ball away. Jordan Nixon has checked back into the ball game for Mackenzie Green. So we are tied at 24. First time it's been tied since 0-0. Uh, Here's Nixon. 
Nixon, long lob into Sierra, and Sierra puts it up. It won't go underneath. Rebound, though, by Andia Jones. She puts it up and gets fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line. Sierra's just disgusted that she missed that wide open layup there. But Jones gets it. She missed her layup, too, but got fouled on the way up. Yeah, but can I tell you, Andia Jones, the Aggies were basically four out, one in, and she was at the top of the, the, the top of the key on the left-hand side, and she sprinted. When, when, when Sierra caught the ball, she sprinted all the way down down to the right box to get that rebound. That was her just, and that's the effort you always get out of India Jones. Jones makes the free throw, and there's the Aggies' first lead since they led it two to nothing. They are up 25 to 24 now with five and a half minutes to play in the uh, second quarter. 534 to be exact. Jones' second free throw is a miss. He'll keep it with a one-point lead, 25 to 24. Rebound that time by Collins. Hastings brings the ball down. They'll do a weave on the uh, back between the circles. Now get the ball to uh, Dean. Dean tries to hook pass it into Collins, but it goes out of bounds. Turnover Lamar, and it belonged to A&M. Hey, Tom, I just got a, a message, though. So game time staying the same, but you asked how they're going to do elementary school day. They're not going to do the elementary part, but they're going to keep the game time at, at the same time. At 11 o'clock. Yes, but okay. no elementary kids, No elementary. Sorry, kids. Didn't mean to build up your hopes there. Here's uh, Leah Wilson with a three. It goes in and out, no good. The rebound by Andia Jones. Jones puts it up, and she gets fouled. She'll go back to the line. You know, I was able to see Andia Jones this past, this past summer as she came and ate breakfast, and, and, uh, and I asked her, I said, how sore are you really after a game? She goes, you really don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's this bruise here, and there's this bruise there. Oh, my gosh. I don't think anybody, you know, because she's not doesn't have the biggest frame. But, I mean, you get everything out of her every game. All SEC preseason. Pretty unanimous on that in Dia Jones. She misses that first free throw, though. Still 25-24. Aggies on top. Aggies have Jordan Nixon, Destiny Pitts, and Dia Jones. Sierra Johnson and Aaliyah Wilson into the game right now. Second free throw is good. And it's – she made that free throw, did she Yes, not? sir, 26-24. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Kind of late on the scoreboard there. It is 26-24. I was looking at the scoreboard and waiting for the point to go up there. Here's a long three by Hastings. It's in and out no good. One and done. The Aggies, no look pass by Jordan Nixon, but they're going to call the foul on Nixon. After she passed the ball, they say she was out of control and she went into the Lamar player who's kind of slow getting up there. As that is uh, Hastings, I believe it is. Yep, Hastings got run into by Jordan Nixon after Nixon made the pass. Yeah, and you could hear the thud even through our headsets with her hitting the floor. So, again, Aqua gets uh, Pimentel back into the ball game pretty quickly. Well, now we got the scoreboard correct, I believe, 26-24, but our computer is wrong, still saying 25-24. So they'll get that. Like I say, it's 2020. We'll blame everything that goes wrong on 2020. For me being a bad broadcaster, well, it's 2020. Well, <laughs> well that'll never happen. Here's a uh, fight for the basketball, and we'll have a jump ball. It'll belong to Texas A&M. And Dia Jones in there fighting Pimentel for the ball, and Jones wins the battle and gets the uh, tie-up, and it'll belong to the Aggies. Yeah, and again, we were talking about bruises. If you look at uh, India's leg, there's a big one on her, on her left leg. And, I mean, that's just par for the course for her. Here's uh, Jordan Nixon, started this ball game, her first Aggie game. Give it to Aaliyah. Aaliyah stops and pops. 13-footer is short, no good. The rebound comes down to Pimentel. Pimentel with the basketball comes over to the right wing. Now dribbles the ball back into the paint. Gets the ball tipped out of bounds by Destiny Pitts, I believe. And it'll belong to Lamar underneath their own basket. Aggie's going to stay in a man on this inbounds play. Sabria Dean, the freshman from Mineola, will inbound the ball. It's a good hustle there by Sierra Johnson to tip it out of bounds. They'll have to reset. Very good friend, very good broadcaster, the late Jason Hightower, who I worked with, was from Mineola, Texas. Owned a radio station there. Still miss Jason. Young man that uh, passed away many years ago from cancer. Way too young. Here's uh, Lamar with the basketball. Going in is uh, Wilson. She puts it up too hard, no good. The rebound, it's the Aggies. Here's Pitts over on the right side. 
Nice pass into India Jones. Jones puts it up and in, and she got fouled by Malone. So India Jones going back to the line for the three-point play. And, and, Tom, you mentioned the best part of that play, and it was the pass by Destiny Pitts. Yep. She gave the ball to the open side for India Jones, which was her, her right hand as she was posted up, which allowed her just to continue to go ahead and pivot that way and come up with that open shot. You know, sometimes entry passes, people think to take it for granted, but when you give a good pass to that post player where they can make the move, off of the pass, it, it makes a big difference. And the uh, free throw is good. It is 29 to 24. And Lamar with uh, the Yaggies now with a five point lead. Here's Lamar, this is Pimentel. Pimentel going against Nixon. Nice defense there by Nixon. Had the hand all in her face. Aggies with the rebound. Get it down uh, deep to Wilson. Wilson to Pitts, Pitts to Jones. Jones up and in. Now the Aggies are clicking. It's 31 to 24. Well, they're taking care of the basketball, but more importantly, they've really picked up the defensive pressure and, and not giving away those. They're rotating, they're getting to the open man, they're defending the shots, and then they're blocking out. Here's Dean with the ball. She's going to hit a – whoop, who, who did she get that out to? That was to? 12. There, yeah, that Wilson. was 12, Wilson. Mikaela Wilson, Dean to Wilson, and then Wilson turns around and just jacks a three from the right side, and it rattled and went. That will stop the bleeding, 31 to 27 now. And then showed everybody that follow through. Here's Nixon. Nixon out to Pitts. Pitts, three ball, too hard, no good. Pitts still finding a range. Wilson, though, with the, getting the loose ball and taking it right back to the rack on the baseline and putting it up and in. And probably something Aaliyah Wilson definitely needed right there. She just needed to get a basket to fall for her. You know, nothing has fallen that game. I think that's just her third point of the game, one free throw and then that. But Aaliyah's struggled shooting the, shooting the basketball so far, so I'm sure she's glad to see one finally fall through. Here's uh, Lamar with the ball. Dean brings it over to the right side, gets it to Pimentel. Pimentel quickly back out to Malone. Malone bounces it in the corner to Gibbs. Gibbs' three ball is off, no good. Sierra Johnson comes up with the rebound. It is 33 to 27. This is Nixon. Nixon gets it into Jones. Jones dribbles the ball out on the baseline. Now gets it out to Sierra Johnson. Johnson, though, loses the ball out of bounds, and it will belong to Lamar. And we talked about entry passes, and there, and Dia Jones was in a position she's not very comfortable at. She dribbled out to the baseline, three-point line, and tried to make a tough entry pass, where really if she makes the pass to the, to the top and then they make the entry pass, Sierra Johnson shooting a free throw. I mean, an easy layup. Lamar has the basketball, Pimentel. Now get it to Collins. Collins almost gets the ball stolen. Dean has the ball now. Almost gets stolen there by Leah Wilson. Dean still on the dribble. Goes over the right side. Now Dean still nope, gives it to Pimentel. Pimentel tries to drive from the right side. It goes out of bounds. Out of bounds on the Aggies. It'll belong to Lamar underneath their own basket. Three on the shot clock on this inbounds play by, by Lamar. 33 to 27. Here's the inbound by Lamar. Get the ball out to Wilson. Wilson three ball this time off the back iron. No good. The long rebound is chased down by Sahara Jones. New into the ball game for the Aggies. Jones goes down, jacks it from 12 feet. It's off no good. Goes out of bounds. It'll belong to Texas A&M. First time we've seen Sahara Jones, and it is Sahara, not Sahara. Found that out. She's a freshman. Freshman into the ball game from San Antonio Memorial. How, how, how excited must she be right now to be playing a Division I basketball, a true freshman out of San Antonio just into the ball game? Well, she got herself a little out of control after that rebound, <laughs> well, though, too. Well, so I'm sure she was, she was excited, extremely right? excited right there. <laughs> Lamar has the basketball. They pass the ball four times and finally get it to Pimentel before a foul is called on India Jones. No, they're, no, they're, they're going to get, get that. Uh, they're going to get Sahara. Oh, they got Sahara. Okay. So she's on the stack book now. So she's she's still excited. Our she just needs to take a deep breath and relax and play basketball. Here's the uh, inbound by Lamar. Pimentel gets the ball back after the inbound. She puts it up short, no good. Sierra Johnson with another rebound. Sierra Johnson, now that now she has eight rebounds in the game, so she's two rebounds away from a double-double with ten points. Come down the other way, and then Dia Jones gets it up and in, and she has 13 points in the game. 
And I think most of those have been in this thir second quarter. 35 to 27 now. We got 49 seconds to play until halftime. This is Pimentel. Pimentel, a little bit out of control, going through the paint, gets it out to Gibbs. Gibbs back to Pimentel. Now Pimentel dribbles over to the left wing. Gets it in the corner to Malone. Malone drives the baseline, puts it up, a whistle and a foul. Foul on Jordan Nixon. And that was on the shot, so they'll go to the free throw line. With 36 seconds left to play here in the uh, second quarter. The, uh, the scoreboard here at Green Arena is correct, 35 to 27. Our, uh, our stat monitor has uh, the Aggies with 34 points, which is incorrect. First free throw. But, of course, the people listening to us don't have a stat monitor, so they don't care. Well, don't worry, neither do I. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. So you don't care either. Malone missed the first free throw, misses the second free throw, and then Dia Jones goes up and gets the rebound, her fifth rebound of the game. I think they took me literally when I said, I really don't use this monitor that much. I just I would like to have it, you know. <laughs> well, they won't give you one then. Here's Mackenzie Green. She has the ball. 20 seconds now left to play. There's 14 on the shot clock. Green going against Pimentel. Now she gets double team. Hook pass it to Jones. Three-pointer off the back iron. No good. Sierra there with the rebound. Puts it up and got fouled. She got fouled going up by Michaela, Wil Michaela Wilson. That could be Sierra's double-double. She's got the double-double in the first half there. Ten points, ten she rebounds. Already, yep, she already had the points, and now she's got the rebound. So a double-double in the first half there for Sierra Johnson. And we also got to be on the India Jones double-double because I think she was on uh, consecutive double-doubles coming off of last year. We, you know, right. we, we didn't get any notes really this game. Well, she's got five rebounds in the game, so you know she's going to get it as we're not even the halftime. Johnson makes the uh, first free throw. Makes it 36 to 27, and uh, we'll make it a 10-point lead. No, missed the second free throw off the front rim. Seven seconds left to go, 36-27. Aggies lead it by nine. Here's Pimentel. Pimentel going against Green. Kick it outside to Hastings, and Hastings trying the shot, but it gets blocked by Wilson at the horn, and that's the end of the half. It's 36 to 27. The Aggies trailed most of the first half, all of the first quarter, trailed by as many as five, but they come back to lead it by nine here at halftime, Tap. You know, again, Gary Blair wants to take that first quarter and realize, okay, it's it, it's over. And, and they started getting their dominance going in this second quarter, and, and the big reason is is because you got your two big nails. First free throw is good by uh, Hastings. Hastings averaged 12 and a half points a game last year, one of the returning starters, and she just made the second free throw to cut it back inside 10. It's 38 to 29. Aggies have the basketball. This is Wells. Wells from the right side. Get it out to Jordan Nixon. Nixon to Wilson. Wilson, nice feet underneath the Sierra, and Sierra puts it up and in from the right side off the glass. Sierra Johnson now with, uh, I believe, 15 points in the game to go along with 11 rebounds. It's 40 to 29, back to an 11 point game. Here's Jack in a three ball and a nice shot by Anicia Gibbs. The junior from California just hit a three from the left side. It's 40 to 32, an eight point Aggie lead. Aggies come down, this is Nixon. Nixon, her three pointer is too hard, no good. The long rebound comes down to Lamar. This is Malone. Malone brings it down, left side goes inside the arc, now comes back outside the arc, reverse the ball to the right side to Hastings. Hastings goes in, puts it up once, no good. Rebound fought for. Galloway had it, but lost it to the Aggies. Aggies fortunate there, gave up penetration. They need this from Kayla Wells. Well, they didn't get it from Kayla as it was off to the right. It was a three ball from about 22 feet. No good, one and done. Rebound comes down to the Cardinals. Pimentel goes baseline left side. She gets bumped by Sierra Johnson going to the basket. Aggies still are getting beat off. Pimentel does a nice job. She's quick, but the Aggies are going to face quicker players throughout this season. They better get better at this dribble defense. Johnson's second personal foul. She has 13 points in the game, not 15. As I said, Pimentel going to the free throw line. As she has seven points in the game. She's the leading scorer for Lamar. Gibbs has six, and Malone has five. And Pimentel now has eight. She just made the first free throw. It's 40-33. Tell you what, I really would like what Aquanisha Franklin's done with this team. I, I think give her a couple of seasons. This team will really be, you know, tough to beat, especially in their conference. Second free throw on its way off the front iron. No good. Up high for the rebound is India Jones. 
Jones' uh, rebound count now is six. Here gets it underneath uh, Wilson. The bounce pass from Jordan Nixon. Now back to Nixon, but she loses the ball. Got it stripped by Pimentel. Pimentel to Malone. Malone all the way in off the glass. No good, but a whistle and a foul. And that's the third personal foul on uh, Kayla Wells. I really didn't think that she got her on that. I think Kayla realized it, but I thought she just kind of faked. But officials said, yeah, and now they're looking down. I guess she must have got a part of her somewhere because Pimentel's holding something. Destiny Pitts will come in for Wells as Wells goes out with her uh, third foul. Zero, Kayla Mitchell checks in for Lamar. We got actually, uh, you look at the bench areas, the, uh, the COVID protocols here, uh, really different. The, uh, the teams during timeouts, they have five chairs really outside the end line on the concrete. Uh, some of the Aggie players are actually sitting with assistant coaches and trainers off the end line on the concrete. The dance team, by the way, is performing not on the court, but on the stage where the Hullabaloo band normally sits. First free throw good, second free throw not. It's 40 to 34, a six point Aggie lead. Aggies have the ball. This is Pitts over on the right side. Gets it out to Jordan Nixon. Nixon dribbling against uh, Kayla Mitchell. Now back outside to Pitts, three ball, got it. There's Destiny Pitts, first three pointer as an Aggie and she just hit it from the right side. That's what she did at Minnesota. She's doing it now for Texas A&M. And that's what A&M needs. And I know Kayla Wells is down. I'm just looking at her. You get such a view of her. She's down at that baseline and she's pretty disappointed in her performance right now. Probably putting way too much pressure on herself. Nine point lead for the Aggies, driving the ball from the left side. And a, an offensive foul called on Malone. Malone with the drive from the left side. And she gets called for the foul. Jordan Nixon went stepped in right there. Kind of Lamar did such a good job of taking those, uh, those, those uh, charges in the first half. And Jordan Nixon says, I can do it too. But if you just look at Kayla Wells at that end line, you can tell she's frustrated. Pitts, this time her three, she gets clipped on the hand. And she's shooting from the corner. And she was fouled that time by Galloway. And Pitts will go to the line. Is she going to be shooting three? If she got fouled, if she was in three-point range. I think she's shooting three. I'm looking for the official to put up the finger. Yep, yes, she sir. is. She's going to be shooting three. Way to be on top of it, Tom. Yep, I thought that was a three-pointer she tried and got fouled. You're in midseason form. <laughs> I know. I don't understand. Doing those high school basketball games is <laughs> helping right. you out. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I did one yesterday. Here's the uh, first of three and missed that one. Aggies are 10 of 15 from the free throw line. Pitts from Detroit, Michigan, Country Day High School. Transfer from Minnesota, makes the second free throw. Yeah, the Aggies got a little more national this year. You know, you yeah. don't look and not 95% of the, the team is rosters from uh, Texas anymore. Indeed. Third free throw is good, so she made the last two out of the three, and the Aggies lead by 11, matching their biggest lead, 11 points, 45 to 34. 6.51 left to play in the third quarter. This is Mitchell. They reverse the ball over to the left side to Malone. Now bring it back outside to Mitchell on the left wing. She goes top of the key out to Hastings. Hastings three ball misses everything, but the rebound goes into the hands of Malone, and Malone got fouled going back up. This is just a Lamar team that's kind of built in the in the spirit of Aquanisha Franklin. They never give up on any play. They know exactly where the, everybody's going to be. They rotate the ball. They they make a take a three point shot. Backside's going to come in and rebound. And the Aggie guards have got to do a better job of, of block, boxing out on the on the defensive end. First free throw is uh, by Malone is good. Makes it 45 to 35. If you're just joining us. Lamar led for, for just about all of the first quarter, most of the second quarter, led by as many as five in the game. But the Aggies finally took the lead back, led by as many as 11, led by nine at halftime, and now they lead by nine again, 45 to 36. This is Aaliyah Wilson. Wilson goes over to the left side, now gets it to Nixon. Nixon. One-handed pass out to Pitts in the corner over on the left side. Now Sierra's play it out high. Tries to go in low to Antia Jones, and Jones gets bumped as uh, she tries to catch the ball by uh, Hastings. And team foul number three. 
Again, yep. nice idea right there by the Aggies, but they also got to recognize when India Jones is triple team down low, it's going to be tough to force that ball on the inside. Here's a lob in to Aaliyah Wilson, and she puts it in from just inside the free throw line. I don't know whether that lob was intended for Wilson, if it went too high for Jones, and Wilson just came in and caught the high ball and uh, put it in from the free throw line. But you come back the other way, and nailing the three-pointer is Gibbs, the junior from California, just hit a three. That was a good answer. And it's 47 to 39, the Aggies by eight. On that on that inbounds plat, pat, play, I think I saw a smile under Gary Blair's mask, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that wasn't what I was drawn up. <laughs> Come down low to Sierra Johnson, and Johnson puts it up in the end. Now she's got those 15 points that I was giving her uh, credit for. 15 points and 11 rebounds for her double-double. Here's Lamar with the ball. This is Hastings over in the corner. Go to Mitchell, Kayla Mitchell. She's going to drive against Johnson in the baseline. Tried to get it back outside to uh, Malone. The ball, the loose ball is picked up by Malone. She shoots too hard, no good. The rebound comes down to Aaliyah Wilson. Wilson down to pitch. She'll try another three. It's off the front rim, no good. Rebound is tipped around, and it goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Aggies. And India Jones is diving on the floor just for the fun of it. You know, what else to Why do? Why not? Yeah. Show the coach that you got hustle. I think they know that. You were talking about Aaliyah Wilson uh, early in the ball game and seeing her without the brace. And, and this is the Aaliyah Wilson that we saw glimpses of two years ago. We went out to Hawaii, and she blew out the knee. She was out for the rest of the season, uh, went, did a great job of uh, tending to her rehab, and uh, came back last year. Uh, I don't think you could ever say she was at 100% last year. But uh, this, is the, this is the Aaliyah Wilson that we saw, saw at the start two years ago. <laughs> Absolutely, and we actually had a glimpse of her when she was at uh, Arkansas for a year. She exactly. came in here and played a game. Wilson of Lamar tried a three. It's no good, but Pitts of the Aggies tries a three, and it is good. Her second three of the ball game from the left side, and Destiny Pitts finding the range from outside. Aggies have their biggest lead, 52-39. to 39. Well, 13 points. It's a nice give and go, but they can't finish as Wilson gets the ball left side of the bucket and puts it up. It will not go. Come down the other way. Wilson loses the basketball. I know we got lots of Wilsons. That's Aaliyah Wilson. Lamar comes down. Nice give to Michaela Wilson. And Wilson puts it up and in Michaela uh, Wilson of Lamar. So we got two Wilsons on the court. And those two have gotten possession the last four possessions up and down the court. I'm just so. going to say Wilson for the rest of the game, and I got a good chance that I'll be right. And guess who has it? Wilson of the Aggies, who gets it to Jones. And Jones gets fouled going to the uh, basket, and she's going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. Hastings got called for the foul. Timeout 402 left to play in the third quarter. The Aggies lead it 52 to 31. Hey, uh, Texas Farm Bureau members get two free tickets to select A&M athletic events when you show proof of membership at the ticket office. Visit texasfarmbureau.org slash sports to learn more about how you can get free tickets just by becoming a Texas Farm Bureau member. Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, proud partner of Texas A&M athletics. Aggies by 11. This is Aggie basketball from Learfield IMG College in the game. And Texas A&M leads at 52 to 41. Yeah, we were uh, laughing a minute ago about playing the name game. We told you that the Aggies on their roster, they have three Greens, uh, two Johnsons, and two Jones. And uh, they have a Wilson, but Lamar has a Wilson, so we have two Wilsons in this game. Uh, one of the Aggies' Greens is Zay Green from Duncanville. And I'll tell you what, Tap, really looking forward to her being on the court. She and... Um, and uh, Morris, Alexis Morris, are both waiting for NCAA clearance, uh, trying to get clearance from the NCAA as transfers as Jones makes the first free throw. But Zay Green, I'll tell you what, oh, she is yeah. an athlete. I yeah, saw we, her a couple of practices, and I was just amazed. She <laughs> I can, saw her when she wore the Tennessee orange and played <laughs> against us. I know what she can do. <laughs> Second free throw by Adia Jones is no good. It's 53-41, to 41, back to a 12-point lead for the Aggies. Actually, that's their biggest lead, I do believe. Lamar has the basketball. This is Kayla Mitchell. They weave on the outside. Now come back over to the right wing to Dean. Dean get it to Wilson. Wilson to Mitchell. Mitchell hook pass underneath to Lamar's Wilson, and Wilson puts it up and in. 53-43. It's a 10-point Aggie lead. 
Again, that pick and roll from the top has really hurt the Aggies all day long. Destiny Pitts tried to get there from the weak side just a step late. Mackenzie Green to Destiny Pitts, another three-pointer. Destiny Pitts, after she missed her first couple of threes, she's hit three in a row. So Destiny Pitts that time about a 21-footer from the right wing. So Destiny said, I might have been a step late on defense, but I'm not going <laughs> to knock down this three. <laughs> She's got 11 double figures in her first game as an Aggie. Here's a ball loss as they tried to get in the ball to Wilson. The Aggies have it back. Here's Walk. India Jones. She took an extra step as she tried to split the defenders going to the basket. Turnover A&M, and it belongs to Lamar. I was watching the practice with Zay Green, and I swear to you, she got up and blocked a shot by uh, Sierra Johnson. Zay Green, they, they, they list her at six foot. I'm not sure. That might be about an inch too high. But uh, that gal has springs. I'll tell you what, she can get up. And Sierra's 6'4 and all of that. <laughs> exactly. Here's a three-pointer that goes around the rim, in and out, no good by Dean. One and done, and the Aggies get the ball back. Leah Wilson has it. And Dia Jones at ninth rebound, getting close to that double-double. Jones going to try to get around the defender. They'll call the defender Gibbs for the rebound, her third personal foul. She has nine points, Gibbs does, and a couple of rebounds, but just picked up her third foul. And Dia Jones, 15 points in the game now, has tied Sierra Johnson for high score. And like we told you, she's one away from a double-double. And the uh, first free throw is good. She's got 16. And Dia Jones, I'll tell you what, we've got some, a great senior class for this Aggie basketball team this year. Made the first free throw. Tom, I got a question though. 58-43. Are they all truly seniors? I mean, don't they? I, I'm, I'm so confused with they get this, but this do doesn't count. A, do, does this count towards eligibility? Do they get another? If uh, so, I, I'm not chosen? Gonna, yeah, I'm not going to go out there. I think that they can choose. I'm not sure yeah. whether it applies to basketball or not. That's something that we'll learn about before we commit anything. But, yeah, it was certainly the case in baseball last year, but not sure about the basketball. Anna Dr Dramane <laughs> is in the ball game now. Her first appearance, the senior returner for Texas A&M. Here's a three-pointer by Lamar. It is no good. Come down, the Aggies pits a 4-3. No, this one's short. Rebound by Dramane. Gets it out to Wilson. Wilson puts it up and in. Anna with the assist, and Aaliyah Wilson with the bucket, and the Aggies lead by 17. You know, with the rebound and the assist, and when I just saw her warming up, Tana Burge was, was talking to me. I said, oh, my gosh, Anna looks like she's really, you know, changed the shape of her body. She goes, no yep. one's worked harder than she has over this offseason. And I tell you what, we come down the other way, and Lamar gets a Collins down low and puts it up and in. She was the first one out here uh, pregame shooting shots here today. Anna Dramane. Minute 45 left to play in the third quarter. Tried to get it inside uh, Ama, but Anna, but stepping in front of her was Gibbs. Lamar with the uh, steal. Come down Mitchell. Three-pointer Gibbs, it's no good. The rebound fought for, and Adia Jones trying to get that 10th rebound, but it goes out of bounds. Long to Lamar. On that last turnover, Mackenzie Green threw the pass, and she, you got to remember that Anna's uh, six foot six, six foot five. Throw it up high. <laughs> Don't throw it at six feet. <laughs> she really has worked hard. She's a, a Facebook buddy of mine, so I got to see a lot of the work that she was doing when she uh, uh, went back home to Latvia during the summertime and came back to Texas A&M. Here's Pimentel. Pimentel's going to drive to the basket the right time. That was a nice move there by the guard, the, the senior guard, Pimentel. And she put a little hang shot there under the basket and put it up and in. It's 60 to 47. Pimentel has double figures, 10 points. Here's McKenzie Green. Green out to Destiny Pitts. Now to a McKenzie Green. Give it to Jones. Jones drives the basket left side. Whistle foul on Michaela Wilson. Yeah, Jaden Pimentel on that last move. Really, you saw a lot, everything she's got. I mean, they say she's 5'3", and that's probably stretching it right there. But I can promise you, if she was 5'6", Tom, she'd be playing at a, at a major college and wouldn't be at, uh, at Lamar. No knock on Lamar, but, you know, again, she's got a lot of game with her. India Jones at the free throw line, and she makes the first one. Jones now with 18 points in the game. One minute left to play here in the third quarter. Jones, second free throw, got it, 19 for uh, Jones. So we've got a uh, 
Nope, not a timeout. We've got a Sahara. substitution yeah. as Sahara Jones will go into the game. Going to have to educate on Mark Edwards over there because I said Sahara first when I went to practice, but it is Sahara. Here's uh, Lamar. This is Hastings. Now has the ball to Collins. Collins gets it to Pimentel. Happy to see Mark's able to come and do this this year. You know, Absolutely. I know he's going through a lot of things. Battling with some illnesses. Mark Edwards, PA man extraordinaire for uh, Aggie basketball and volleyball. And we've got a whistle and a foul. I think that's on uh, Dramane. Well, you're gonna, somebody's going to have to get that last name right. <laughs> I think Mark got that one right. No, it's Draymond. Draymond. Right, again, I'm going to I'm going to ask her every year, and it seems I think she pronounces it. I think she just for the I think fun she's of it. just messing with us. I think she pronounces it different every time I ask. <laughs> yeah, that's what I. It heard. was Dramane. It was Draymane. Yeah, it's tap. No, no, it's tap. <laughs> That's why we just yeah. like to call Again, stick to Gary Blair. Call them by their first names. Anna, Indy, Destiny, McKenzie. Collins makes the first free throw. Sahara, as long as we say that yep. one correctly. It's 62 to 48. Second free throw is good. Made them both. Swish. Junior from Mesquite makes a couple of free throws. And she's got six. It's 62 to 49 with 35 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Mackenzie Green brings it down against Dean. Green goes around the screen, set by Anna. Dramane. Now Green goes into the paint, gets it off to Adia Jones, and puts it up and in. Nice feed there by Mackenzie Green. Mackenzie did a nice job of getting good penetration, got it to Indy for the easy putback. 15 left in this game in this quarter. 64 to 49. Eight seconds. They'll uh, wait for a last shot. This is Pimentel, and Pimentel carried the ball, and it belonged to the Aggies with three seconds left to play. And Gary Blair, he, you know, again, he never wastes an opportunity. He's going to wait, wants to work on a last second, you know, quarter, game, yeah. half opportunity. So with 3.4 left in this third quarter, he's going to put uh, Sierra jo Johnson back in the game. Lamar picks up full yep. court man here. Yeah, don't want to give him a cheap bucket here with three seconds left. They give it to Green. It goes out of bounds. Touched by Pimentel. Yes, Aggie's got to come up. And once they see McKenzie King, Green can't shake Pimentel, they need to come up and help. And now they're going to bring him up, uh, more P players up. They're going to throw the uh, touchdown pass down to Sierra Johnson. She stops, pops, and it's off the back iron. No good. But the hey, they gave themselves a chance for it. It was a nice pass down and a nice catch there by Sierra Johnson you know, at, now about I say, point, at about the 10 yard line. But Sierra could have run it all the way, ran it all the way in, <laughs> as opposed to pull it up and starting to celebrate there. Well, she, she had, had time, time to dribble. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah, she got it with three seconds left. All right, we're going to a fourth quarter. The Aggies lead it by 15, 64 to 49. We'll be back. It's Aggie basketball from Learfield IMG College. The Aggies leading it over Lamar, 64 to 49. Your UPS air delivery of the game. Three three-pointers in the game by the transfer Destiny Pitts. Brought to you by UPS. With UPS Next Day Air, your package is guaranteed overnight delivery so your Aggie gear can arrive just in time for game day. Visit UPS.com to learn more. UPS, official logistics company of the Texas A&M Athletics. 64-49, going into the fourth quarter, Aggies will have the basketball. I tried to get some uh, some on this free year or not, and, and uh, the person I talked to, Steve Miller, says he's not 100% sure, but he's pretty sure across all sports it's a free year of eligibility almost. So we'll see who all we have back a year from now. And, you know, the other side of it, too, is a bunch of these Aggies women's basketball players gradu have graduated, and they're graduate yeah. students now. So exactly. they took advantage of, of uh, not having basketball, you know, a lot more free time. Come back to play. Aggies inbound, but they lose the ball on a turnover. Lamar has the ball, and just like that, a three-pointer zing from Angel Hastings from the right wing. It's a 12-point game, 64-52, to 52, just started the fourth quarter. 
Aggies have the ball and they throw it away two times down the court. That time McKenzie Green trying to get it to uh, Destiny Pitts and it goes out of bounds and that causes Gary Bear, Blair to call a quick timeout. But this will be a full one here, Tom, because and it's that, that free one. 921 left to play in the game, 64 to 52. We'll take another break. It's Aggie basketball from Learfield IMG College. Live. Aggies are one of uh, eight teams in the SEC that are uh, playing on this uh, first day of basketball. As uh, a couple of the games are already done, number one ranked South Carolina just got by Charleston 119 to 38. They eat by. <laughs> Arkansas 96 to 49 over Oral Roberts. In the fourth quarter, Alabama is uh, beating Samford 76 to 62. 11th ranked Kentucky 72 to 46 with their uh, interim new head coach is Matthew Mitchell announced just a couple of weeks ago his retirement, we wish him well. He'd been dealing with uh, health problems in the off season and he is retired now. Kentucky leading Murray State 72 to 46. Aggies, by the way, I don't know if we mentioned it, they're 13th ranked in the early season rankings. Up 64 to 49 here, or to 52. And uh, Grambling is taking on Florida, Georgia is taking on Mercer, and Auburn is taking on SC Upstate. So there you go. Those are the eight games in the SEC that are going on today. We're back to play here. The Aggies lead 64 to 52 by 12, and Lamar has the basketball. This is Hastings. Hastings going to drive right to the basket, put up a little uh, no-look hook shot, driving to the baseline, and it got the bounce off the rim, and it went. And it's a 10-point game, 64 to 54. And Lamar's not going away. Is this full-court oh. pressure? They're struggling just throwing the basketball in, and there it's another turnover. Sahara Jones trying to get the ball over. The ball got stolen. This is Pimentel. She goes down, puts it up, and got fouled by Mackenzie Green. And that gets Lamar Cardinals up off the bench. And saying, yes, sir, it's an eight-point game, and it could be a seven-point game with a three-point play here as Jordan Nixon comes into the game for McKenzie Green. You know, I don't think Lamar cares that Texas A&M was ranked 13th in the country coming in. They, they didn't care two years ago. No, not at all. And they didn't care if Kennedy Carter was playing, not playing. They just came in here and whipped our butts. Here's uh, Pimentel at the free throw line, and she misses the free throw. It's uh, 64 to 56, eight-point Aggie lead. Sierra Johnson got the rebound. And here's the Aggies, Jordan Nixon, who started this ball game for the Aggies. Gets the ball to uh, Sahara Jones. Jones, hook pass into Sahara Johnson. Back out to Jordan Nixon. Three ball is off the back iron, no good. Whistle and a foul on the rebound. They're going to get, what do they get there? They got 21. Yeah. Gibbs. 
And the funny thing was Hastings had Sierra Johnson blocked out behind <laughs> behind those well, two, and she was saying, hey, she came over my back. Well, that's why I was uh, hesitating who it was on because I thought it might be on Sierra. Sierra gets the ball, backs into her defender, gets the ball to India Jones and puts it up and in and drew the foul. So India Jones will go to the free throw line. And, and that's just how that play right there is drawn up. You get the ball to one post player, the other close player gives her an opportunity to make a move. If she does it, she dives to the basket on the weak side, and then you have good post-to-post -post passing right there, and you get the bucket, plus you get to the free throw line. By the way, India does have the double-double now. She got that 10th rebound, and with 23 points going to the line, she has still 23. If she missed the free throw, couldn't get the three-point play. Rebound tipped around, and Kayla Wells chases it down. So the Aggies back up by 10, 66 to 56. Wells gets it from Johnson, goes to the rim, puts it up, got fouled on the way. The basket, the ball wouldn't go, but she'll go to the line to shoot two. And Gary Blair really wants Kayla Wells to, to have a couple, have some success offensively. She struggled this game. She picked up two early fouls, so she had to sit a bunch. Then she picked up a third foul early on in that that uh, in this second half, and so she sat the majority of this game. And I know she's pushing herself. Gary Blair's just trying to get her to relax and let the game come to her, but he's trying. He wants her to have some success. Wells receiving uh, all SEC second team preseason honors for the second time in her career. Eight of the Aggies' 15 players on this roster transferred into the program from another school. So uh, you talked about the transfer portal and how it's really the Aggies have made it work for them. It really has as Wells makes the first free throw. Wells now with a five points. Second free throw is on its way and in and out, no good. Rebound tipped around. I think we got a foul. That one might be on. Or maybe a violation. Oh no, we had a, we had a, line, a lane violation. Thought we might have. I keep trying to give a foul to Sierra Johnson. I thought that one might have been on Johnson too, but it was a lane violation on Lamar. So Wells is gonna get to shoot the free throw again. And there was some, there was really kind of a, a uh, a headline because Kayla Wells is a 90% free throw shooter for so hard to miss one. <laughs> right. Well, she made that one on her second try. And it's 68 to 56. So the Aggies have stretched it back to 12 with a 5 0 run. Or 4 0 run, I should say. Here's Pimentel with the ball. She dribbles around, gives a little curly kneel routine there. Dating myself. I was about some, to say, who? <laughs> some of our older people will know who I'm talking but about. But I knew who that was. Here's a uh, nice feed there by Pimentel to Galloway, but Galloway can't get the finish, and the Aggies get the rebound. Now get it to Wells, and Wells gets fouled there by Malone on the floor. And the Aggies will inbound the ball underneath their own basket. Curly Neal, the great dribbler for the Globetrotters, who just passed away about a year yeah. or so ago. Took Marcus Haynes' place as the great dribbler great for the dribbler. Globe, for the globe right. Trotters. Yep. I used to love the Globe Trotters. Still do. Well, I just never get a chance to see them anymore. <laughs> you know, they used to be on TV all the time. Here's uh, Jones. She gets the inbound, and she goes up, puts it up too hard, no good. But Sierra is right there with the rebound and the putback. Sierra Johnson and the Aggies have stretched it out to 14, 70 to 56. So a 6-0 run now by the uh, Aggies after Gary Blair called that timeout. Had a little uh, self-improvement seminar with his team, and it evidently worked. The Aggies lead by 14 now. We got 7-19 now left to play in the fourth quarter. Here's Pimentel. Pimentel, nice feed underneath the Galloway, but Galloway gets it uh, slapped out of her hands, out of bounds. It'll belong to Lamar. Coach Aquanisha Franklin not happy at the non-call there. Thought her player was really hacked pretty well. I think she's going to yeah. call a timeout right there. Got a timeout with 7.14 left to play in the uh, game. And uh, is this going to be a uh, – I think this – Yeah, that goes to a full. Yeah, yeah it goes, goes to a full. full. You, you keep me straight on that. I can never figure it out. So, uh, anyway, hey, uh, we'll be back, okay? This is Aggie Basketball from Learfield IMG College.
Some lucky fans are also walking away with some Smith Street's gift cards. Fans in section 106, row HH. Today is your lucky day. Smith Street, any way you like them. Good to hear from our friend Andrew Monaco listening to and uh, to the game. And those of you who are watching on the SEC pass through, SEC Plus, we welcome you to Aggie Basketball. Andrew and John Thornton will be sitting in these seats on Sunday as the Aggies will be hosting New Orleans in their season opener. The Privateers, baby. That's my, uh, I'm a little proud alumnus. So are you? <laughs> You saying if you were calling that game, you couldn't be uh, impartial? Impartial? Oh, absolutely, I could. <laughs> <laughs> no, again, I was thinking about that when you brought that up. The men went from going to the Bahamas uh -huh. <laughs> to South Dakota to now just opening up with UNO, <laughs> which may be better in South Dakota. I, I, I can tell you that. Maybe not the Bahamas. Well, right now it is. South Dakota, unfortunately, numbers are high. Hastings jacks one up at the play clock, and it will not go, but the rebound, long rebound, comes out to Galloway. Now a fight for the ball. Pimentel picks it up over on the left wing. Seven minutes left to play in the game. The Aggies by 14. There's a bounce pass into Galloway, and Galloway with the nice finger roll puts it up off the glass, up and in. Aggies down quickly. Wells stops. Pops got it from the left side. Kayla Wells, little 12-footer from the left wing. I love the fact that the Aggies are really attacking this press off of made shots by the other team. 72 to, six to 58 now, 6.38 left to play in the game. Here's Pimentel. Pimentel out to Hastings. Hastings thought about the three. Now she'll drive against Aaliyah Wilson, goes down underneath the bucket, gets it outside to uh, Dean. Dean to Wilson. Wilson goes in uh, against Jones, puts it up. Too hard, no good. And Dia Jones with a nice defense that time. Come down the other way, Aggie's ball. Wells goes in, now comes back out. Gets it to Leah Wilson, reverse the ball. Out to Jordan Nixon. Nixon to Johnson, top of the key, goes inside to Jones. The ball is tipped away into the hands of Lamar. Nice defensive hands there by Sabria Dean of Lamar. Pimentel calls the offense. Now under six minutes to play in the game. Goes around the screen, set by Galloway. Now get it over to Hastings, back to Pimentel. Galloway with another screen, gives an open shot to uh, Pimentel, but she misses off the back iron. No good, rebound by Kayla Wells. And a whistle and a uh, timeout. Oh, timeout there by uh, be a Jerry Blair, time. a 30-second timeout. <laughs> 5.41 left to go in the game. It is 72-58. to 58. Of course, Aggie football is back in action after uh, two weeks of uh, not playing football games because of COVID situations. It'll be Saturday night at 6 o'clock at Kyle Field, and it'll be nice to see Aggie football back in action. The Aggies... Uh, in, the, in the rankings, the FBS rankings that came out yesterday, ranked number five. Very great ranking there for Texas A&M, but what counts is the ranking in December, of course, as Coach Jimbo Fisher will Absolutely. tell you. But uh, lots of uh, respect and recognition there for the A&M football team. And I don't even think Coach R.C. Slocum had to fight real hard to get him that fifth ranking either. Nope. You know, there's probably been times in the past it helps to have a representative, but yeah. again, the Aggies are well deserving of that number five spot in the CFP. Just one loss on the season. Of course, they've got, uh, they've still got four games to play. Uh, as they'll play the next, uh, the schedule has them playing the next four weeks. Two at home and two on the road. Okay, we are back to play. Texas A&M has the ball. We've got a uh, KK Green making her first appearance in the game for Texas A&M. One of those transfers, or excuse me, the true freshman, KK Green from Chicago and Whitney Young High School, the alma mater of uh, Coach Bond, Coach Kelly Bond. Come down the other way, this is uh, Mitchell. Mitchell shoots, lose the ball out of bounds. It'll belong to Texas A&M. Two Chicago natives going to be going home on this trip uh, right. with the Aggies. You have, uh, you know, KK, KK Green and also Malia Johnson. 
with uh, Coach uh, Kelly Bond White ready to the happiest to probably go show him around. <laughs> yeah. Here's Wells with the ball over on the left wing. She drives into the paint, puts it up too hard. Long rebound, chased down there by Mitchell. Nice rebound by Mitchell, getting up high. We got five minutes left to play in the game. The Yankees lead at 72 to 58. This is Lamar Gibbs. Gibbs gives to Collins. Collins gets it slapped out of her hands, gets it back, works her way against Johnson, puts it up high off the back rim, no good. The rebound comes down to Lamar. Lamar gets it out to Mitchell on the right wing. Now Mitchell staring into the eyes of Wells, works around the screen by Collins, shoots, it's off, will not go. The rebound comes down to uh, India Jones. Aggies are dominating on the boards. It's 46, 47 to 21 as far as rebounds are concerned. This is Green. Green gets it over to Wells on the right side. She shoots, 15-footer is off, no good. Rebound, chased down by Dean. Sabria Dean gets the ball, underhands it over the left side to Hastings. Hastings shoots, back iron, will not go. Rebound comes down to KK Green. KK is a 5'6 freshman guard out of Chicago and Whitney Young. Here's the uh, hook pass to Wells. Wells goes baseline and she puts it up and it's going to be on Wells. They're going to call the offensive foul on Wells. She pushed off before she shot the ball. Well, that's her for Kayla's fourth. It's just, this is a game Kayla just wants to forget about. You know, she finally makes, she's working hard without the basketball. She gets the ball, she makes a move, and they call her. Just nothing has come easy for Kayla. And, you know, a lot of times when, when kids expect a whole lot going into their senior year, and, I, again, I'm not saying Kayla, she just put a little pre more, too much pressure on herself. If she just relaxes and plays basketball like we all know Kayla, you know, Kayla Wells can, she's going to be fine. Here's Lamar with the ball. Got 3.50 now left to play in the game. Aggies lead by 14. Here's Pimentel. Stop, pop, jumper, dances on the rim, will not go. Rebound comes down to Sierra Johnson. 18th rebound for Sierra Johnson to go with 17 points. Jones leads the scoring with 23 points in the game. Offense. And we got an offensive foul called on KK. Offensive foul. KK Green is, is, is pretty strong, and she just showed it on that reverse pivot. She just took that left arm and pushed Pimentel off. Pimentel sold it a little bit, but again, got the call. Two freshmen have played in this game for Texas A&M, Sahara Jones and KK Green, two true freshmen. Here's Lamar with the ball, and the floater by Gibbs is no good, but the rebound comes down to Collins. Collins puts it up. It won't go. Goes out of bounds. It'll belong to Lamar. No reset of the shot clock at 17. 3.13 left in the ball game. Lamar inbounds the ball underneath their own basket. Gets it to Malone. Malone fumbles it out of bounds, though, and it'll belong to Texas A&M. And Dia Jones, all SEC first team preseason recognition, also on the Naismith and the Wade Trophy watch list last week, named there last week. Very well deserving. Yeah, any, you know, just to, for people to appreciate what India Jones is amazing. Pitts with a fourth three-pointer. Nope, this one's short, no good. The rebound fought for, comes out to Lamar. This is Pimentel. The quarterback brings it all the way down, right side, kicks it outside to Hastings. Hastings three ball is off into the hands of India Jones. 2.43 left to play, 72 to 58. We've got a substitution timeout for Texas A&M as Jordan Nixon will come into the game. Kayla Wells is going to finish with eight points, two rebounds, and you know, but again, those four fouls just kept her out of the game, you know, where she could never just get into the flow. So Kayla Wells out of the game. And Dia Jones, 23 points and 10 rebounds in the game for that double-double. That's the Wells, Wells Fargo between the baselines as the moves of the game by India Jones. All SEC, first team, preseason. Got a whistle and a foul as the Aggies lob it into Sierra Johnson. The foul's going to be on Lamar's Malone, Malone number five. And she'll go to the free throw line. Malone came from the weak side and on the lob, she just tried to move up under Sierra, but didn't give Sierra an opportunity to come down with the basketball. So the contact, the official right on top of it, made the right call. We're talking about Destiny Pitts, who's in the ball game right now for the Aggies, transfer from Minnesota. 
at Minnesota as the first free throw by uh, Sierra Johnson is good. Johnson has 18 points. Destiny had uh, over 1,200 points and 216 threes in her first three seasons at Minnesota. She was a Big Ten Freshman of the Year and numerous other Big Ten honors. Did Sierra make that second free throw? Yes, she. No, actually, she did not. Okay. Uh, and Dia Jones got an, an offensive rebound and put it back. 75 to 58. And Jones has 25 points in the game. I was reading about Destiny there when she shot that second free throw. Goes out of bounds, out of bounds on Sierra Johnson as she tried to save the ball. So it'll be Lamar's ball in front of, in front of their bench. So yeah, go ahead. Sierra Johnson's coming out the ball game, with, and she's going to finish with 18 and 18. Just a nice little day. Aquanisha Franklin, the head coach at Lamar, of course, uh, finished her career here at A&M in 2008, led the Aggies to the Elite Eight that season. Here's Pimentel with the 15-footer. It's no good. Rebound, though, comes down to uh, Gibbs, and Gibbs gets fouled going back up, and she'll go to the free throw line. 2008 was her final year, finished her Aggie career with 627 assists and was just a, a joy to watch for uh, four seasons here at Texas A&M. And I got to, you got to call a bunch of those games and I got to call every one of her games of her uh, Aggie career. Yeah, you know, again, once, you know, she, you know, that class was what put Texas A&M on the map for women's basketball. Exactly. You know, you had Aquanisha Franklin, Marina Kia Tunrache, Katie Pounds. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, he mentioned, was it uh, Rito was in that group, yeah. I think? You know, right. Patrice Rito. And, and so all of a sudden people were like, wait, wait, Texas a and going to take this sport seriously. And, again, you know, after the hiring of Gary Blair, most people knew that was going to happen. Galloway made both free throws at 75-60. to 60. Aggies have the basketball back. Pitts to Jordan Nixon. Nixon goes around the screen, set by Sahara Johnson. Now go in the corner to KK Green, into Jones. Jones puts it up, it's short, won't go, and the rebound goes out of bounds. Out of bounds on Lamar to belong to the Aggies underneath their own basket. Gary Blair still talking to the official. Official just kind of, not sure what he said, can't read lips these days, you know, but official just kind of scratched his head afterwards. Inbound to Pitts, out to Nixon, out to Jones, outside to KK, but KK took a little hop stop. Hop step there before she uh, tried to launch the basketball, so she got called for traveling. Yeah, you got to catch the ball. Step into the pass. You can't catch it, then step into it. Minute and a half left to play, so the Aggies are going to uh, win this season opener and go 1-0 and oh as they get ready to get on the plane and go to Chicago for a Saturday afternoon game, 4 o'clock with DePaul. Remember the last time the Aggies played DePaul, what a game that was, the NCAA tournament here at Reed Arena. As uh, I believe that was the, was that the game that uh, Kennedy Carter hit the, uh, hit, hit the buzzer shot, Absolutely. I believe, to uh, win that game over DePaul. Yeah, of course it was. Remember that very well as she got the, as uh, the great rebound. And, uh, and the feed to uh, Kennedy, and Kennedy hit it from uh, outside the three to win that to NCAA game over DePaul. That's the last time they played, so you know that DePaul will remember that. They might uh, have some players, some uh, senior players that uh, were playing on that team. This is uh, Johnson at the line. She missed her first free throw, missed her second free throw. That's Malia Johnson the freshman from Chicago who will be going home. Come down the other way. This is Dean out of bounds. It'll belong to the Aggies. Minute 15 left to play in the game. Gary Blair still working on everything. Jordan Nixon, who's playing the two right now, it jumped out of bounds to throw it in, but he always has his point guards throw it in. He made sure the freshman, KK Green, got in there to, to inbound the ball. He wants them to play the game right. This is Green. She has the ball. Coming out to get her is uh, Dean. And now it's going to be. Uh, they got her for that? carrying oh, the basketball. Carrying the basketball, yeah. second carry. Coming in for Texas A&M, uh, another freshman. This is Kenyell Perry.